Crops here at Elverdon rely heavily on water to survive. Um, if we don't provide water to the crops here, then they will die. We don't just say it, we can actually demonstrate the effect that water has on our crops. Here's something I prepared earlier. These two plants haven't had any water for the last seven days. We can see that the plants are really stressed. All of the water has gone out of the stems and leaves. They're a lot weaker and the plant is now starting to collapse. That's why a farmer like me loves it when it rains. The difference between these two plants is this plant has been grown with rainfall only and this plant has been grown with rainfall and irrigation. So you can see the importance that irrigation plays. So this plant has had rain only and it's had no water for a week. So let's tip it out and see what the results are. It has very small tubers just starting to grow. The root system is okay, but it's fairly small. But as you can see, the soil has all fallen away from the roots because it is so dry. So therefore there's nothing, there's no moisture for these roots to get hold of to make the plant bigger or to swell the size of the tubers to the size that we want. Let's now look at the other one. So the water that we have given to this plant has made the difference where we have a lot bigger canopy, we have a taller canopy, but we have lots more tubers and lots of bigger tubers as well. So this plant is starting to grow the size of tubers that we want to sell. But without regular water, these plants won't get any further than this because these plants have had no water for seven days and as we can see, they are now wilting beyond the point of recovery. It's important to understand that my lovely soil Whilst perfect for growing potatoes, it's lovely and soft, it doesn't actually hold as much water as some other soils. Different soil sample, please. So here we have a soil from 20 minutes up the road. This soil, as you can see, is a lot, has a lot more clay. It grows wheat really well without any irrigation, but we couldn't grow potatoes in it. The soil type is too heavy, which is why we have to use this lighter soil. My potatoes, onions, carrots and parsnips need irrigating along with my lettuce as well. I've shown you why we irrigate and now I'm going to show you how we irrigate. It's very important that we do it very, very gently. But I can't do it all with one of these because that would require thousands of me. So instead, I've got one of these which has 18 big watering cans all the way along its length. On this machine, these jets produce a very, very fine water droplet. The sprinkler turns round and produces a really nice gentle rain down onto the crops. So I've talked about how it's very important to apply water very gently, but whilst this might be a really big machine, it's important to understand that we actually apply water very precisely, calculated in a very scientific way. So we use weather stations, computers, and apps on our phones so that whether I'm in the office or out in the field, I know exactly what the weather is gonna be. So once we know what the weather is going to do and what might, might, might be coming, it's very important that we actually measure it. This is an easy way of measuring how much rain we get. It's a rain gauge. So if we get four millimetres of rain in our rain gauge, we actually don't need to irrigate for 24 hours. So the guys can all have a well-earned rest. But on a day like today, we've had no rain. It's very hot and windy, so we're flat out irrigating and the guys are very, very busy. Another scientific point of interest is that we also use special probes that we can measure the moisture in the soil but also we can use electronic rain gauges in the field that can deliver messages to my computer or my phone and tell me exactly how much rainfall we've had. People who come here to see our irrigation ask me where our water comes from, so I bring them up here. So the water in this reservoir has been pumped from out of the ground underneath us over the winter into this which we use as a store. Then when we get to the spring and the summer and we need to irrigate our crops, 
we can pump the water out of our reservoir into the underground mains and through the machinery that we've just seen. Looking at large scale and big units of water is always difficult to understand. Therefore, I like to bring it back to the small scale and individual plants. So we have to consider that for every potato plant, we need to supply it this amount of water every day and every week our potato plant needs this many bottles of water to keep it growing to its full potential so that we can produce these nice high quality potato tubers to go into our customers boxes. When thinking and explaining how we use water wisely that's when we can then remember that farming is magic. <laughs>